Development sanctions Utah are being urged to seek social development to ensure they become fully integrated into society to fulfill their civic duties as this country's future generation. The encouragement came from representative of the National Insurance Services, Felina Brown Henry, who was addressing the gathering at Thursday night's 2015 Lions Club annual secondary school national public speaking competition. Henry said that it is important for the youths to understand the importance of acquiring the, the ability to be a public speaker because whichever career path they take, they will require the skill. She adds that the NIS took up co-sponsorship of the event for the first time this year because they recognize that corporate entities have a responsibility to play in the development of the nation's youth. The future of our nation. Public speaking affords such an opportunity. The ability to speak is paramount for daily living because everyone should be able to communicate. It is not by coincidence that we at the NIS have a social development as part of our mandate because we believe that if our youth are developed socially, then they would be able to integrate at any sector of our society. The public speaking competition is designed to nurture talents among the young people and to provide them with a platform to discover their true potential. A team of nine doctors from the USA headed by Vincentian, Dr. Steve Nanton, will be offering medical services to Vincentians in the coming week. The announcement was made by President of the Lions Club of St. Vincent, Michael John. According to John, this is one of the club's projects being conducted this year, aimed at the social development of SVG by providing vulnerable and poverty-stricken individuals with quality medical care that could not be afforded by them any other way. This year, they have introduced screening of breast cancer. This project is valued over 100,000 EC dollars annually. And have already accumulated over a million dollars since it was introduced five years ago. We are also partnering with the Canadian group and the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines to provide a home for Ms. Florestine Spring, who was displaced in the 2013 December floods. That house is valued at $83,000. 20 students from Jamaica received certificates of participation as they completed the 10th EDF CSME, an integration program at a closing ceremony held last evening at the Beach Comas Conference Room in Villa. During their stay here, the students visited various institutions and government ministries to gain a greater understanding of how the CSME operates in SVG. Speaking at the closing ceremony, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Foreign Trade, Commerce and Information Technology, Nathaniel Wilson, Williams emphasized the fact that the students have the future responsibility to lead on the issue of integration. Responsibility to carry on the legacy of integration that was that was started, to refine it where it need to be refined, to change and to think. In fact, I pray that you would have a level of disruptive thinking, simply disruptive thinking. You disrupt the status quo in the way you operate and say this can no longer work. Let's put this aside. We need to challenge, and I'm not saying we must be, be rebellious, but challenge the status quo. Question issues. Why is this so? Why, can it, why can't it work a different way? Isn't there a better way? Also making an address was the CSME focal point for Jamaica, Alicia Morris, who emphasized the importance of the exchange program, noting that it is the youths who are the ones who will aid in the further development of CARICOM and that she is confident that the students will leave the island with a better understanding of how the CSME works here. I think this is the kind of approach that should be pursued as we try to move to a more bottom-up, inclusive approach 
and try to get the youth more involved in matters relating to the CSME. They are the future of the region, and they are the ones who will come up with solutions to some of the long-standing problems that have bedeviled the integration process. We leave St. Vincent tomorrow with a far better understanding of the CSME than we had when we arrived here last Sunday. I know that the students will have a lot to tell their peers about their experience in St. Vincent when we return to Jamaica. The ruling Unity Labour Party is this evening hosting a massive rally where it is widely expected that party leader Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez will announce the date for Vincentians to go to the polls and general elections. The rally has been held at the Richmond Hill Plain Field in the East Kingston constituency, which will be contested by leader of the opposition New Democratic Party, Annie Musis, and the ULP's Luke Brown. There has been ongoing speculations as to the date for general elections here, however, at a recently held event in his constituency on Independence Day, PM Gonzalez said he could call the date anytime after the benefit concert for Dominica. That concert was held last Sunday night at the Victoria Park. The general elections are constitutionally due by March 2016. However, PM Gonzalez on numerous occasions says he will not wait until such time. His rule in Unity Labour Party is seeking a fourth consecutive term in office. Regional pollster Peter Wickham has already indicated that it will be a tight race between the ULP and and the opposition NDP. As part of Teacher Solidarity Week, which commences here tomorrow, the St. Vincent and the Grandines Teachers Union will be hosting an education conference under the team Quality Education is Relevant to Development. The two-day event will take place on Monday, November 9th and Tuesday, November 10th at French's House in the form of workshops, which President of the SVGTU, Oswald Robinson, says are constructed to enhance the skills of participants and also so the teaching environment. The first day of the conference, he says, will see presentations from various partners of the SVGTU, where the teachers or participants will be placed in an interactive forum. We would have a presentation from Lime, and they would deal with ICT productivity tools and their relevance to quality education, because it's important that. As educators, we, we know or we are aware of some of the tools that could be used to deliver, help to deliver the curriculum or to integrate, to enhance better learning and teaching. We are also partnering with Laureate University, which is an online tertiary learning experience. A Laureate University has a combination of three major universities. So they will be making a presentation to show to the educators, who the participants in the conference, how they can utilize Laureate services to improve quality education. The annual CW Prescott Lecture will be presented on Tuesday, November 10th, and will consist of a presentation from the featured speaker historian, Dr. Adrian Fraser, on the topic, 40 years the struggle continues. There will also include speeches from the Ministry of Health and the President of the SVGTU himself on the health and safety of the workplace, the decent job work agenda and teachers' conditions of service, all of which he says contributes to the quality of education. The lecture will also feature the handing over of three scholarships to children of union members who successfully passed the primary exit exams. Uh, further stressing the need to get all teachers involved in the union's annual Solidarity Week of activities, Robinson said that the union intends to make all incentions more aware of what the SVGTU movement stands for. And uh, I think it's about five students we're expecting to participate in that annual conference because we have to target the, the students to empower them so that they would know why is it that the teachers union would have strike in 1975 they are also affected by the, the working conditions teachers teach, the students learn, and vice versa, because you learn from the students also.